All right, thanks. Okay, okay cool. So um, uh, before we start with the updates, um, yeah, we want to talk about um, a survey that we have put together. There's the link here. Uh, yeah, we would like people to have a look at that, fill it in, uh, share it with us. Um, yeah, the reason to put this survey out is um, we've been talking about this call and and well, we think that maybe it's not um, as efficient or effective as it could be. Um, so well, yeah, we're we want to get feedback from from the people attending if they're getting value from the current format of the call. Uh, if they're not getting value, then what should we change to so that they also get value? Um, if there are maybe other ways in which they, they could get the same value, uh, maybe asynchronously instead of having um, a call. Um, so, yeah, we would really appreciate uh, feedback. Oh. Oh, okay, the permissions. Okay, Susanna, we're gonna fix it. Okay, cool. So yeah, um, so yeah, if you if if you could um, fill that in, that would be very useful for us and we can try to see what, how to change this call to make it uh, yeah, better for everyone. All right, then that, that was the first thing. Then if we go to the updates, yeah, from our, from our team, yeah, the first thing I would like to, to mention is that uh, Dimitri's uh, gym uh, joined uh, last week, uh, the engineering team. So he's a software engineer based in Athens, uh, maybe Jim, if you would like to give us, give an intro to the rest of the people. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm not really good at intros, of course, but um, hi, everybody. I'm, um, I'm Jim. I'm from Greece, as uh, Carlos mentioned. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I'm not really good as in, at intros, so I'm going to keep this short. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be working on this. And I'm looking forward to working with uh, everybody who's involved. So if at some point, like there's some issue that I could help or if there's some guidance that you could offer, I'd be more than willing to talk with you. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. All right, then now we move on to the updates. Uh, Susanna, from the product side, anything you would like to mention? Oh yeah, um, well, I was looking a bit into path unwinding, um, but something else that came up, I don't know if there's any Cosm Wasm developers on the call um, or anyone who is planning on using fee middleware. Um, something came up around whether there should be um, some, some kind of information stored on chain to the amount of fees um, added to packets that were successfully relayed. Um, there's currently this isn't stored. Um, if anyone had any thoughts or feedback on that, uh, feel free to uh, mention that. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't add anything to the agenda ex explicitly. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, if anyone has feedback, feel free to reach out on that. I'm going to open an issue for it as well. Um, cool, thanks. Yeah. All right, then from engineering. Yeah, last week, uh, Friday, we tagged the uh, V7. So, you hoo that's, um, that's a huge achievement. Uh, uh, so, yeah, it's ready, ready to be used. Uh, so now moving forward, uh, our next release should be 7.1, where we will include the 09 localhost uh, uh, client. The feature branch is merged. Uh, we just wanted to follow up here on a couple of items also that we touched uh, two weeks ago uh, from the Relayer team, an, an update on the support for the feature. Maybe Justin. This is in our current sprint. So this is what I'll be working on this week. Okay, cool. Great. Uh, then let's say like in a couple of weeks, we could maybe try to do some end-to-end -end, 
integration testing maybe with Agoric if they're interested? Yes, definitely interested. And is Justin the contact point? Um, yeah, Justin, I think, or yeah, anybody from the IBC team also. We can maybe we can coordinate. Maybe we can maybe start a Slack channel or something uh, together, and we can coordinate there. Sure. Yeah. All right. Then I will do that. Yeah. Um, and another item about the relayer. Um, this issue about the additional client state types. Yes. Yeah, so I did add because uh, we're just on seven dot oh. I did add the solo machine types. Um, and then, of course, I will add the localhost client types also when that's ready. Okay, cool, great. Yeah, thanks. All right, then that's awesome. Um, maybe a question. Uh, well, maybe we can discuss also internally. We might be ready to release 7.1 before we start doing this integration testing. But should we should we wait before we do our all uh, the integration testing the, the three the three teams before we we tag the final v seven point one we can we can create an RC tag I think we, yeah I think we talked about this last week internally um, yesterday so we can tag an RC at least and do the well, yeah that, that sounds good to me I predict that we should have full test coverage by the end of this week on it so okay cool. Great. All right. Uh, then another thing that we're planning to include in 7.1 is the work on ADR8. Uh, there's a couple of PRs that I did open the ADR, um, yeah, specifically the ADR, the, and then um, an implementation of the packet data interface. Uh, maybe Aditya, if you want to elaborate on this. Sure. Yeah. So this unblocks the um, being able to do callbacks to smart contracts when they send an IBC packet um, in a generic way. So Osmosis has already built a middleware for being able to send um, callbacks on ICS-20 packets specifically. Um, but we want to kind of standardize across all packet types so that every application can get callbacks enabled if they want it. Um, so this is kind of what we need from the IBC Go end in order to make that happen. And then once that gets in, we can work with Osmosis to kind of expand their Cosmosm implementation to be generic. Um, and then we'll also work with um, most likely a team from Evmos to get the same callback level for EVM chains. Cool, thanks, Aditya. Um, so if anybody is interested in this use case that Aditya explained, yeah. uh, please have a look at the PRs and give us or some also feedback. For, for other VM types um, that are interested in, in this feature, I know Gorik might be interested for their JavaScript runtime potentially. Um, so that would also be something to discuss. True, yeah. Um, so, Jim, is this something maybe you could have a look at if this is? Yes, yes, I'll, I'll have a look at that too. Cool, great, thank you. Thank you. All right, so that would be yeah the main feature additions for 7.1. And then, um, yeah, we will start, uh, we will resume the work on channel upgradeability um so we will that will be v8 um i will be reaching out to both relayer and hermes teams probably this week to um to plan to coordinate the work uh, probably for q2 so that we can sync uh, together since we will yeah basically need um a, a relayer to have the feature working end to end and also for our end-to-end -end tests uh, with interchain test. So uh, yeah, I will reach out to, to to coordinate a bit on the planning. It's been a little while since we discussed this. So if someone could just refresh my memory, that just ends up being like an additional handshake that takes place to upgrade the channel, right? Yeah, correct. An additional correct. handshake, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, uh, then support for Western clients. Yeah, 
we will include that in 7.1, 7.2, sorry. Uh, and then we're also, in this iteration, we're also planning to tag new V5 and V6 releases with SDK 46.11, which is their first release with Comet VFT 0.34. So that's a bit of the work um, on the engineering side. Any questions, comments? Uh, I have a quick question for local host, the local host. Uh, is is there an expectation regarding the Hermes support for the local host or? Um, I guess it would be nice also to have it in Hermes. Um, I think the main user at the moment is gonna be Agoric and, and another team. Uh, maybe Susanna, do you remember what was the other team interested in the local host? Um, yeah, there Polymer. Andromeda, and then Polymer. Yeah, Andromeda, Andromeda Polymer, yeah. Uh, okay. do you know they, they will be using the gold relayer, I guess. Uh, sorry? Yeah, I, I guess uh, for for now they will use the Golang relayer, but yeah, I guess eventually it would be nice also to have the support for Hermes. So maybe okay. we can we can also coordinate a bit. Uh, I, I, maybe maybe we can discuss uh, uh, offline um, more details. Look okay, up. sure. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good good point. Anything, anything else about this update? Otherwise, on the protocol side, yeah, uh, as Susanna mentioned, yeah, there has been some work on the path unwinding. Uh, Susanna has been gathering requirements from different teams, uh, and yeah, we're gonna be looking into collaborating together with Strange Love uh, on implementing this this application. So if anybody, if, if anybody has um, a, a use case for path unwinding requirements, please reach out to us or Susanna um, so that we take that into account. All right, uh, then updates from Relayer Teams. Maybe we start with Hermes, uh, Luca. Yeah. Uh, so we're scheduled to release uh, Hermes 1.4 by the end of the month, uh, so soon. Uh, it will have the multi-version support, which was tested, works with uh, Comet BFT 37. Uh, we also tested the uh, uh, support side-by-side uh, -side for the SDK 047 with uh, using the IBC Go V7. And we're still working on uh, testing more the next new architecture. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the the V two. That would be the V two Hermes V two. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. Um, cool. Great. Thank you. Um, and from Relayer team. We have a question here, but we can maybe start with the updates. Um, and maybe just yes, so we just cut um, an RC of 2.3 last week. This is probably our biggest release um, so far. So there's a lot of bug fixes in there. Um, this introduces the implementation for the interchain queries that Stride is using. Um, this also removes Lens as a dependency. Um, and moves over to Comet BFT and IBC Go V7. Um, the next RC of this should have the misbehavior detection in it. So we have re implemented that also. Okay, cool. Um... Cool, nice. Nice. Um, great. Thank you. Uh, we have a question here um, about Penumbra and the support of the Golan, Golan Relayer for Penumbra. Yeah, yeah. We so we've been working pretty closely with Penumbra. Um, 
we were kind of blocked on the relayer implementation side of things for a little bit that we just kind of cleared up over the last week. Um, I think that the route that we're going is that the Penumbra implementation of the relayer is going to use their P client D for pretty much most of the accessing Penumbra state and also key management. So we've kind of got a rough design that will require a couple of changes on their side, but we're like pushing forward on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the question that we wanted to ask is that um, is, is related to the proof specs used to, yeah, used to verify proofs. Um, since, well, in Cosmos SDK chains, um, they usually use uh, the Tendermint tree and the IAVL tree. Uh, but since Penumbra is going to be using a different type of tree from AL, IAVL, um, what we saw, at least in Hermes, is that um, when a light client is created, Hermes is hard coding, uh, basically has a, a hard coded values for the proof specs or so using Tendermint IAVL. Um, so that should probably change for Hermes. And we were wondering what the Golan Relayer did to support Penumbra uh, so that when the light client is created for, pen, for, a pen, for the Penumbra chain that the right proof specs are used. Um, that's a good question. I could try to dig in there real quick. Like essentially we have the provider abstraction. So like since Penumbra is kind of a, a non-standard um, Cosmos chain, they have their own implementation of the provider where they kind of have all of their own logic for everything behind that interface. Okay. Um, and I so, believe they at least have the light clients being created. So let me see real quick. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Because one, one solution that we were thinking of was to have some gRPC endpoint that relayers can query uh, for the self-client state of the chain, and that would return the proof specs. And then the relayer can use that to create a light client. Um, mm, I actually don't really see anything that deviates too far from the regular Tendermint implementation. So I'm not too sure actually. Okay. Um, I could try to get an answer for that though. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks. Um, then, then we will follow up uh, offline, uh, Justin, yeah. Okay, thank you, yeah. Cool, uh, then uh, any other updates or topics? Anybody has any questions, anything to discuss? Nothing. Any requests for us? Any wishes? Any <laughs> anything? All right. If not, uh, then um, then we can. Yeah, Please fill in the survey so we yes. can understand uh, what people, why you're, why you're all coming to the call, uh, what value this call is giving you, what it's not giving you. Um, yeah, it's the, the link is in the chat or it's in the agenda. It's in the agenda. So here it is. Um... 